takes the snap, sets up, sets up, throws one over the knee, intercepted! Marlon Jackson! Marlon's got it! We're going to the Super Bowl! We're going to the Super Bowl! I know you're going to dig this. Ryan Grigson is no longer with the franchise. Ryan Grigson is no longer with the franchise. But I'm about to go down! You're listening to the For the Culture Podcast, hosted by Luke Diamond, Jason Spears, and Bobby Jefferson. First off, let me say this to, you know, Coach Nation and everyone that's listening to the podcast. I absolutely love Jim Irsay. You know, now granted, he's not perfect. He's had his flaws. He's made his mistakes. But if we're counting the heart and how big his heart is and how much he's passionate about football, I love him for that. It's also the reason why we are where we are right now. Jim Mersey is an owner, okay? He is an owner, and he's passionate about his team, and he's passionate about ball. But there is now an opportunity for the Colts to, if we want to get to the next level, and when I say the next level, that means we are constantly in the hunt and we're competing for Lombardi's, not ASC South Banners. But if you want to start competing for Lombardi's, it is time for the Indianapolis Colts to make the biggest change in franchise history, and that change is bringing in a president of football operations, someone who knows football, someone who knows how to balance football, someone who knows personnel, someone who knows schemes, someone who can make decisions for the better of the football team without having any emotion. Chuck Pagano is still here right now because of the emotion and the heart of Jim Irsay. It's hard for him to cut ties with someone after what Chuck's gone through and all the things that they've done together and how he sponsored Chuck through cancer and all that. But it's time for the Colts to actually bring in a president of football operations. That's what Bill Polian was in conjunction to being general manager. I think that would be the move that would put the Colts on pace to start competing and competing fast because if you bring in someone who's able to work with Ballard and his staff, and start putting things together where the owner can just be the owner and do all the PR stuff. You can tweet all you want to, but when it comes time to make a football decision as far as, hey, Luck may not be ready, what are we going to do? Oh, well, let's, let's just keep Scott Cozine because Chuck says it's a good idea. No, your new football operations person will say, hey, look, to better this football team, this is what we need to do. Me and Chris are going to sit down and we're going to come up with something and we're going to let you know exactly what we're doing. If you trust us enough with the franchise, then trust us enough to know that we're going to make the best decision for the horseshoe. And I think the reason why we have stunted our growth as far as a football team is the fact that our owner is now in the day-to-day operations of the football team. And he had to do that because he had a first-year general manager in Ryan Grigson, and he had to actually babysit him. And because he was doing so much babysitting, he basically put himself right back into front office decisions, and it has handicapped us. And I'm I'm with you. When you brought out a brand-new general manager but kept your head coach, everybody knew that it was just a matter of time before this whole thing went bad because Ballard has a totally different vision from Chuck Pagano. You can tell from – Ballard having to go back and recant some of the things that Chuck said about Malik Hooker and the comparisons to Ed Reed and how Pagano's been so cliche and Ballard's been so matter of fact. Like, you can tell that they're going to make it work because they're professionals, but at the end of the day, it's not smart for football. So, yeah, we probably wasted more time than we needed as far as regression, but going forward, if they can make just that one move, I think that would be a centerpiece move, a cornerstone move that can actually move the Colts to where they are right now, which is mediocre or below, to contending for Lombardi's on a yearly basis. Yeah, I would say mediocre with luck and then far below mediocre without luck, and I like that. And like you said, like I, you're definitely bigger on Ursay all in all than I am. Maybe it's because you're more part of the community living in India and being a season ticket holder and stuff, but I love his passion. I love how much he loves the Colts. I love that he's like a fan and an owner. I I do love that, but he's got to stop with the football day-to-day operation stuff. I mean, it's just, he can't do it. He's incapable of doing it. A lot of the blame, and I'm like i the biggest fire Chuck guy. I was the biggest fire Ryan Gritchen guy, fire Gargano. 
I was all over that for the last three, four years. But there does come a point in time where it's not even Pagano's fault or Gritchen's fault. We know that Chuck can't coach. We know Ryan Gritchen couldn't draft. So there comes a point in time where Pagano's not going to fire himself. He's not going to quit. Gritchen wasn't going to fire himself. He wasn't going to quit. So eventually, all that falls on Ursay. Really, just hiring them in the first place kind of fell on Ursay because neither guy really had the right credentials to get the job in the first place. Ryan Gritchen was basically a scout for the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, he had no business getting a general manager job. And that one day John Middlecoff was talking about it, he was shocked when he heard that Ryan Gritchen got the job. It was shocking in the Eagles organization that Ryan Gritchen went out and somehow found a general manager job. And then for him to hire them in the first place and then to let it go on as long as it did, and then even this offseason to force Pagano on Ballard and not give Ballard the opportunity to go out and hire his own head coach. And you brought up a good point, fighting with Chuck through cancer, Chuck Strong and all that stuff, the personal connection they had and the bond they had going through that, it definitely makes it a lot tougher for Ursay with their personal connection and the journey they went through together in 2012 than us fans. But at the end of the day, this is a business. We're a football team that's trying to win games, and enough is enough. You need to bring in a guy who could run the day-to-day football operations, work with Ballard, work with Ballard to hire a new head coach after the 2017 season, and get this team in a position to go out and compete for Lombardi's and win Super Bowls because we've wasted six years of Andrew Luck's career. Today's his birthday. How old is he, 29 years old? 28, 29, something 28, like that. 20, I mean, we talk about him. Everybody talks about him. Greatest young quarterback in the league. I mean, he's almost 30 years old. I mean, he's, he's aging before our eyes. He's six years into his career. Like you said, might not even play the season. Who knows if he's not ready till the halfway point and we're 0-8. What's the point of even throwing him out there? Just get him hurt for 2018 behind this offensive line? So we've wasted six years of a generational talent, a guy you see once every 10, 15 years. He's that good. He's that special of a quarterback. And to waste as many years of this man's career as we already have is sacrilegious to the game of football. It's not fair to Andrew Luck. If I was Oliver Luck, I would be going on national media tirades every day about how unfair my son is treated in Indianapolis. You had Ryan Grish and Chuck Pagano basically verbally abusing him in the media. Some of the quotes Ryan Gritchen has had about him in his contract, I mean, just made me sick. And the fact that this has gone on for six years just really, really, really upsets me. It really pisses me off. And something has to be done. Something will be done. And I love the idea of bringing in a football operations guy, somebody to run the day-to-day operations, so we could just kind of ease Ursa out of that role and just let him be the owner and only the owner. <laughs>